Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to the virtual world of St. Pius X Parish here in Bradford. Of course, the virtual world of St. Pius X Parish here in Bradford is something that some of you have already entered in the past by going to our website, uh, or perhaps by receiving a, a parish, uh, an email from the parish. Uh, but we're entering a new phase now, of course, with the current situation in our country, in our society, and here in our own community where we're not allowed to gather together. And it's particularly painful for many of us that we're not allowed to gather together uh, for the Eucharist or for communal prayer. And so what we're beginning to do as of today is to uh, record and post on our website, at least in the beginning, uh, videos of the Liturgy of the Word from the Daily Mass. So you will hear the readings proclaimed and I will offer a brief uh, reflection on them. And we're going to be making uh, every effort to do that on the same schedule as our weekday Mass schedule from Tuesday through Friday uh, of each week. Uh, we're starting today uh, on an unusual day on Saturday just to make sure that we know what we're doing. And hopefully, please God, we do. If you're watching this, things have worked out well. Uh, and then we also are hoping to move a little bit further into the world of live streaming. So stay tuned uh, for future live streams of the Sunday celebration of the Eucharist, which is something that we're working on as well, so that we can uh, at least gather virtually. So that being said, thank you to those who are with me today. Uh, a couple of our parish team have come together, and uh, we hope that uh, this video is uh, useful for you in your life of faith and your life of prayer. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. The Lord says, When Ephraim and Judah acknowledge their guilt and seek my face, then they shall cry out to me. In their distress they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us, on the third day he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. Then I shall say to them, What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, I have killed them by their words of their mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light, for I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The psalm response is, It is steadfast love, not sacrifice, that God desires. It is steadfast love, not sacrifice, that God desires. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. It is steadfast love, not sacrifice, that God desires. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give you a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. A sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise me. Do good to Zion in your pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifice, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. It is steadfast love, not sacrifice, that God desires. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, 
one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified, rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humble, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we hear our Lord teaching us today, and we hear him as he so often is, a very direct, very to the point, penetrating, of course, to the very heart of the matter. And so, in our Lord's teaching, there really is no reason that we should expect to, to mistake what he's teaching or not to allow it to speak to us or to penetrate our hearts. And yet, in the course of our Christian life, this happens and it happens and it happens again. So often the Lord teaches, we hear, but we do not fully receive. And in the case of today's gospel, we might wonder how that is possible. It seems pretty clear. We're told at the beginning of the parable to whom it was addressed. It was addressed to people who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. And then at the end, the Lord gives us, in a sense, the moral. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. What could be clearer? Well, in a certain sense, of course, nothing could be clearer, but clarity in communication isn't always clarity in reception. And so what is not always entirely and perfectly clear to us or to, uh, or, or to others is the way in which we receive the Lord's teaching, the state of our heart. And one of the things that can happen to us with all the clarity of the Lord's teaching is that we can sort of listen to it and hear it and not receive it. Probably no one who's watching me today would consider themselves uh, to be righteous and someone who looks at others with contempt. None of us would think of ourselves as someone who exalts ourselves. But I do think that one way to get into the way in which this parable applies to each of us is perhaps to hear it also as a parable of prayer and the state of those who pray. Because, after all, both of these men were indeed praying. The Pharisee addresses God. He speaks to God. So, so far as he is concerned, he is praying. But, of course, his prayer, as the Lord reminds us, exalts himself. But, from his perspective, his reply might be, well, I am still offering thanks to God. And how often are we told, as Christians, to adopt and maintain in our lives a stance of thanksgiving. The Pharisee was thanking God as well. And we can be tempted and potentially fall into a similar state of mind, as even as we try to live the Christian life and to follow the Lord, to adopt that stance of thanksgiving. It's hopefully a little less likely that our thanksgiving is going to be for how much superior we are to everyone else, but at the same time, we can simply fall into the trap of looking around us, seeing the blessings that are part of our life, giving thank our life, giving thanks for those blessings, and not really proceeding any further, not really reflecting any more deeply on the source of those blessings, the Lord Himself. And if we do, our stance in prayer is going to take a little bit of a turn. It's going to become a little bit more like that of the tax collector, because we're going to recognize and realize uh, just how little we ultimately deserve the blessings that we have been given, how much they depend on the one who made us and the one who loves us and the one who sustains us through each and every day of our lives. We're going to recognize that those blessings come from God. They are God's gift. And so the times through which we are going now, I think, are an opportunity for us to make sure, to make certain as best we're able, that we adopt that proper stance 
of prayer and that proper stance of thanksgiving. We should still, even in these difficult times, give thanks for the blessings that we have been given, for the gifts that we even now continue to receive. But we should do so always with a recognition and a remembrance of the one from whom they come, so that we might, by God's grace, be not only thankful, but also, as our Lord teaches us and commands us today, humble.